We ran into a problem trying to put the new starter in. Uh, the new starter is actually longer and this portion here has an angle on it and this one doesn't. And this bracket is a little bit different from this one too. Not much, but just enough to where we can't put this one in uh, back in without moving some lines. So I'm going to show you where those lines are. So let's get over here. And I really hate the way uh, Nissan did this engine compartment. Uh, these screws right here get in the way. Uh, they're hydraulic lines. I think they're transmission cooler lines. I'm not sure. So we're going to have to disconnect this uh, right here so this line can move. And then way down on the bottom, let me zoom in. We got to disconnect that bracket right here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on both and then we can move this line a little bit and then I think we'll have the extra room that we need in order to put the trans or put the uh, starter in so let's go ahead and get to that all right <laughs> wow. this thing's in there good okay let me get the one on the bottom down there uh, I think I can do that one from the bottom of the car Right, the bolt we're looking for down here on this one is you bring your hand up through here and it's this one right here. So let me get the 10 millimeter and get on it. Let's get up in here. All right, here's a little trick. You can take the ratchet off then uh, put the socket on it and just use your hands. Because getting down here around this bracket, getting your fingers on that, it's a little tough. So you can do this. A little mechanics tip for you guys that uh, don't do mechanics that often. There we go. So now we have this line loose so we can move it around a little bit. We'll just have to remember to put that uh, bolt back on. So let's get back up top side. All right, uh, we're back up on top. And I want to remind you guys of something. See this uh, this little line right here? This is the line we took off. This bracket down here and this one here. Let me get down close. Alright. Now this is to support these. And that down there is to support that. So this, doesn't, this joint doesn't flex. So be careful. Don't, <laughs> don't break that, because if you break that, then you're going to have to go and buy some brass tees and all kinds of stuff, and then, you know, engineer some way to hook that back into a tee. So, um, I think with that being said, there's another bracket down there that also supports this line, because the line isn't moving that easily, and I don't want to stress this joint, so I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to uh, release another one, and hopefully I can get it to move over a little bit more. All right, this is where the other bolt is. It's uh, here's the exhaust manifold. This little bracket right here. It's right next to it. Uh, you'll need a uh, 10 millimeter and a uh, like a little three inch extension to get to it. And you don't need a stubby ratchet. If you have a like a one and a half inch extension, that would be good too. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the uh, ratchet. And the extension off so I can uh, do the rest of it by hand now that it's broke free. So let's get this off of here. Alright, here we go. And it's free. So let's get back up on top and uh, get that starter in. Alright, and we're going to bring the starter in, nose down, and then we're going to stick it right in here right in there like that you got to pull this end up then this side gets pushed down let me see if I can't find a place for this so it's out of your view there we go okay now once you get it like this notice the solenoid is down and you can see those two screws on that bracket and you just kind of push this down in here and then pull this this way 
It's a real pain in the butt, as you can see. So let me uh, finagle that a little bit more. This has got to come right here. This part's got to come here, and then you got to go down like that. So let me get that. Okay, I got it right here. I was hanging up on these lines right here, the solenoid was. So now we should be able to just slide that down in there. This little bracket's always getting in the way. It's like, it's got to go, this little bracket has to go in. This little bracket has to go in first, and that's why you, there it goes. Why you have to do it that way. Now you can get, get it and rotate it and grab the solenoid and bring it up. So you can see why a lot of people just take the exhaust manifold off. But if you don't have the gaskets or the money or the time to do that, uh, you can do it this way. And uh, some people actually go so far as to uh, take the crossover pipe off and then the exhaust manifold off. And in order to get this off, half the time you do have to take that off. So when you do that, you have to go all the way to the other side of the car and there's two gaskets over there you got to take off, bolts and stuff. And it's just, it's a nightmare. So if you're willing to fuss and wiggle a little bit and take a couple lines loose over here, you can do this uh, without all doing all that. So that's why I'm making this video is uh, if you have a 4x4 D21 or Pathfinder uh, this year or, you know, close to it, uh, you can see why this video would be a big help to you. So let's get underneath the car and get this situated. Actually, uh, I have to hook up that switch on the top up here. So let's get to that. All right, you need to come back under the front of the car and these cables right here, you have to push them through. But I have to stop right here and I have to uh, put a, uh, uh, a terminal on this for the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oil pressure sending it sorry it's a uh, it's hot out here it's probably 90 degrees in the shade so and it's about oh probably 90 percent humidity it's a little uncomfortable i could do this a lot faster but then uh you guys wouldn't have this video so yeah all right let's uh let's get a terminal and get one on there and then we'll get these wires pushed up that way Okay, I got my terminal on here using my uh, trusty little terminal tool. So let's get this uh, these wires stuffed back up in here. There we go. So we can see them. There we go. All right. So now they're stuffed up there. Let's go back up on top and let's hook up the starter and then put it together. All right, now I've got the solenoid uh, wire here in my fingers, my hands, and this little tab right here up on top is what we're concerned about. Uh, what I mean concerned is uh, it has to go into the starter a specific way. And that little tab, let me get the starter up so you can see it. Or that, that little uh, tab has to go in this tab right here, the little cutout up on top. So let me see if I can't position the starter a little bit better to where you can see it. Maybe I can zoom in on it. Right there. See that square tab on top? That's where this other piece has to go. Has, has to go in in a specific orientation. This part right here on top, that's what goes in there. So I could probably grab a little brake clean and clean that off too. So I think I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll put it in there. And it's important to do that now before you put the starter in or bolt it in because it's a lot easier, trust me. The frame and everything gets in the way down there right up in here and the motor mount everything so it's easier to just orient hit this the, this way and then go ahead and install it all right there we go got it in 
uh, now all I have to do is move the starter around and and uh, get it in there all right now we're gonna take this starter and we're gonna uh, shift it a little bit so we can align it more with the uh, the holes more like that and then you have to go under the car and install the bolts from the bottom and you'll have to lift the starter up and I'll show you how to do that all right we're under the car now and uh, what you're gonna do is you have to uh, position the starter there up in the up into the uh, bell housing which is where the transmission is and in order to do that you have to stick your hand up here between the brake line bring it up through this way and then up under here now you can grab it and you can push it up there and line those holes and they're a real pain in the butt to do but you can do it so um, let's get this starter in here and get the bolts in right, I'm going to show you another angle here um, what you do is you bring your hand up in here like this and you can rotate it back and forth until you can get that bolt in there and the way you get that bolt in there if you bring your hand up through here between the exhaust manifold and the cross member of the 4x4 and you can stick your hand on that bolt and, and turn it like that while you're wiggling the starter and then you can get it in. Once you get one bolt in, you can take your little ratchet and stick it up through here and tighten that bolt while you use your other hand and hold the starter. And once you get that one in, then you can go out to the top one way up there. So let me show you how to get that done. All right, here's the setup we're going to use: 14 millimeter, nine inch wobble, and a six inch three inch drive adapter or extension. I'm sorry. All right, so let's get this up in here. And you want to go up over the exhaust manifold and onto the bolt right there. Then you can get your little short ratchet and hook it up right here and start cranking you might have to adjust the starter a little bit but uh, you'll get it let me see if I can't do that real quick all right I got it up there it uh, went in just fine and by the way you need the, the, the little wobble extension so that you can uh, clear these hydraulic lines right here, these transmission lines. If you don't have the wobble on it, uh, it'll be real hard to do it. Uh, you may get away with a small 3 8 universal right here, and you may not. So that's why I like wobbles. Uh, they're, they're not perfect for every job, but they do a good job. So <clears throat> let's get the bolt in the top. All right, to get the top bolt in, we're going to use a little bit different uh, thing. Instead of the wobble being right on the here, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a 3 inch extension. And what that does is allows a small bend right here so it can go around the exhaust pipe. So, and then I use uh, the 9 inch and then the 6 inch and then the uh, short stubby. You'll need the longer one to actually tighten them both down. But uh, to get them in quickly, I use this. So, um, I usually take it off here and then I stick the bolt on it and then stick it up uh, in the car so let's do that all right I used a little extra light down here to show you where we're gonna go and we are gonna go right there right there and we're gonna uh, we're gonna come up uh, here let me uh, zoom back out all right we're gonna come up over here like this hold on the bolt fell off all right we're gonna come up over the frame up over the top up over this bracket right here on the exhaust manifold and straight in all right I had to reposition my hand 
so now we can uh, just push it into that hole right there like that there we go now you can start uh, turning it and get it uh, get it turned in so let me show you right here there we go okay let me get the tools on it and let me get it tightened down all right she's getting tight sorry for the wiggleness it's a little hard to use a tripod in this particular instance here because of the angles all right she's tight now i gotta do is put a, a long one on here and snug them both up so let's get that done all right to tighten it up you can just uh use that pan right there and there's probably a torque spec i don't know what it is i usually just snug them up and it works so if you're concerned about the torque spec look it up in the book if you're a newbie if you're an experienced mechanic i've been working on cars for as long as i have them or longer or whatever do what you see is fit for you so let's uh Get up here and get this other one tightened up. I may be able to get it with the current set up. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like I can't. So let me uh, let me get this tightened down. Okay, same deal. Just use the uh, pan to tighten it up. Here's another angle for you. The one up on top, way up there, and then this one here. So and they're tight. So. Uh, not quite grunt tight, but close enough. So let's get back up on top and finish connecting up uh, the battery cable. And get all that other stuff put in there. Oil filter and all that crap. All right, before we go back up top, I decided, hey, while I'm down here, why don't I go ahead and uh, put those screws back in those, uh, those lines that I took off. So... I think we're gonna do that next we got two down here and then we got one up on top so let's get these in and tightened up okay looks like I just about got this one done all right these don't have to be real tight you don't want to you don't want to break these so they should just be snug and that's that's pretty snug so let's get on to the one up on top all right, let's get this one up on top here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the starter's actually in the way now, which is funny. All right, with the uh, starter in the way, you can't get your hand on it very easily. So I opted to go ahead and use my uh, ratchet combination wrench. So, and guys, this is your car, your wife's car. Tell her you need to buy a $60 set of these so that uh, you can do this job and it'll save your family about 350 bucks. Okay, so anyways, let me get this finished off. I got uh, this one on, that one on, then I'll go do the one up on top when I do the starter uh, right in here. So, All right, so let's go back up on top. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, stick this one in right here. All right, so let's uh, get this tightened up. All righty. I think that's just about it, just snug. That's all you need. All right, now we need to get the battery cable down there right here on that so we're gonna have to get that nut off so let's figure out what that is and take care of it okay um, the one I took off was a 12 off the original and the one I took off of this one is a 13 because I'm sitting so high up on a stool and it's a real pain in the butt what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead we're already down we're done with the bottom of the car so we're gonna go ahead and uh, let the car down off the jack stands to make this part easier all right, we got the jack stands out, and now we're letting it down. Okay, let's get back up in top. Oh, you're gonna need a step stool to get into the car, by the way. 
and be careful uh, they do slip now and then and I, I slipped and I took some skin off if you work on cars you know you're gonna get hurt it's just uh it's just part of working on cars there's so many sharp edges and stuff so let's get this battery cable down here let's see if I can find it there it is pull it up and there's a little boot on it too so be careful of that and we're gonna get this and you're gonna install it right there like that and then you're gonna get your lock washer or if your new one has a built-in lock washer on it, the little bumps and serrades, you don't need a lock washer. This one does, so I don't need it. So, But if yours doesn't have this, if it's smooth, like on this side, you're going to want to put a lock washer on that. Vibration will get it loose. So let's get this on here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm trying to. I don't even know if it's in focus. Let's see. There we go. Sorry about that. I think you can get the idea so we get this on here get it on as tight as you can by finger and then you can get your uh, ratchet 13 millimeter ratchet wrench on it and get it the rest of the way all right I got the uh, ratchet wrench on it if you guys that are saying, well, why don't you just put your regular ratchet on it? Well, you can't because the frame is right here and you can't get it on it. So you're stuck with using a regular box wrench or if you go out and spend 60 bucks, you can buy yourself a metric uh, reversible ratchet combination wrench. And what I mean by reversible is that it's actually got a little lever on it right here where you can reverse the direction uh, be careful people on eBay and all over they they say that their vent is reversible if you look at it, there's no lever there's no tabs on the side and their idea of reversible is you can flip it over that's their idea of it well that works right up until you get a bolt and a nut up against the frame you can't get it off and the only way to get it off is to cut you and break your wrench so yeah these are uh, these break easier than the other style regular wrenches but uh, but they're a lot more useful so what I do is I usually don't put a lot of stress on these I usually use a regular box wrench and uh, tighten them up with that oh, went the wrong way uh, I usually tighten them up with that or I'm sorry break them with that break it free and then I use these uh, to do all the intermediate work. Sorry, I was off camera there. I was I use these to do all the intermediate work. And then unless it's like something simple like this, uh, I don't use them to tighten up. I just use them to, uh, to get them snug. And then I use another wrench to do the actual tightening. But this is just copper. So I'm gonna call that good. Okay, now you can get your little uh, plastic shield, if you still have it, right here. Let's see if I can get this down here. Get this up and get it up over your uh, assembly here as best you can. Alright, now we have to install the uh, oil sensor. So let's go get that and get that installed. Oh, before I do that though, I want to show you where, where the hole is. It's right there on the left. I can't get my hand in there to really show it. There's the oil filter. And uh, maybe I can. Right, right here. That's it, right there. So we're going to go put the oil sensor in. So let's grab that. Uh. Alright, now we've got, uh, yes. we've got uh, our 27 millimeter deep socket that we need to use to uh, install this but before we do that uh, we're gonna have to put a 3H uh, drive to half inch adapter in here and I want to show you the difference in the drives now this one is a half inch 
the 3 8 drive adapter. This one is a 3 8 to half inch adapter. The first number is supposed to denote the ratchet that it goes on, or the tool that it goes on, and then where it's going. So, we don't need this one. So let's get this one installed, and then uh, we'll get the, uh, we'll get this installed. And for that, we're going to use that and our little stubby ratchet, because it's, it's a lot easier. But we'll do this part by hand, and then use the ratchet. So, let's get to it. Alright, here we go. Now, it's best if you just try to find the hole with your finger first. I, I'm sorry I can't really show you. I don't know if I can get this down in here or not. I find the hole with my finger, and then I put it in there like that. So, and once you get it started, everything's everything's good after that. Oh, oh, thought I had it. All right, let me pause this and get this in. You got the idea. Okay, I got that part in. So now I got to do is put this big socket on it. And there's not a lot of room in here either. Sorry, there's not a lot of room in here either. So you'll have to get your ratchet in there like this here we go and you don't have to tighten this up very much just snug it and that should be good right there all right get that off of there all right now we're going to install the oil filter so let's go get that Okay, we're going to install the oil filter. Um, before you do that, uh, make sure you get a little bit of oil from the oil filter or somewhere and just put a little bit around uh, the seal right here. You don't need a lot, just, just enough to make it wet, that's all. Alright, so let's get over there and get it in. Alright, for you guys that like to preload your oil filters, I don't recommend it on this car because you have to turn it sideways in order to get it on. And if you preload it, well, you'll just be dumping it out all on the ground and all over your starter motor and everything. So, <clears throat> uh, you could probably put a little bit in there and let it sit for a little bit. I'm just reusing the same old oil filter. I'm not doing an oil change. doing a starter change. So, you just uh, bring it down here sideways. And you find out where the oil filter spigot tube is right up in there I can't I can't show you because of the uh, might be able to hold on there it is so, and you just turn it on like that there we go. and then you just tighten it up with your hand not real tight just snug trust me when that seal collapses and it grabs you're gonna need a wrench to get it off don't ever use a wrench to put one on just hand tighten it trust me okay the next thing we need to do is uh, connect up that oil sensing unit uh, I have the original boot that came off of it initially I was gonna just toss it but I decided against it and to go ahead and reuse it and the reason is is because this engine leaks oil like a sieve as you can see well not quite that bad but it does leak it all over the place so if I put this over that sensor it'll help keep dirt and dust off of it so we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna go ahead and uh, reuse it whoop <laughs> there it is so let me get that on there and uh, plug it up okay we got the boot now we're just gonna plug up the oil sensor I know you can't see that, but I might be able to uh, get the camera down here and show you. There we go. And we're gonna slide that boot up over uh, the oil sensor. This is the oil pressure unit, by the way. And you just kind of twist it and roll it around and eventually it'll go on. Like that. Okay, so now we gotta put the uh, shield back on the exhaust manifold so let's go over and grab those and do that okay here we go um, 
It's a two-piece shield. You remember from the first one. If you didn't watch from the first one, then uh, you'll know. Uh, well, then you'll need to know this. All right, there's a bolt here, and then these actually screw into the exhaust manifold. So you have the option of uh, putting this one on. Sometimes you can wiggle it in there. Sometimes you can't. I'm going to go ahead and try it this time. And you don't have to tighten it up. Just put it on there so it'll flop around a little bit. So let's try that. If you haven't done it already, make sure you put some anti-seize on it since they're going into cast iron. And if you don't put this on it, uh, the next time you get into it, these might just snap off. And then you'll be, then you'll just have to do without them. <laughs> and you don't really want the exhaust shield heat going up all over your components in your car. So, or in your engine bay. So let's go ahead and get these uh, in here. I, I've already put the anti-seize on mine. I'll probably put a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get to it all right I got some anti-seize on them and I'm just gonna screw this one in real quick and we'll take it over the car and put it on come in this way and uh, there we go and <laughs> lift up the bottom there you go and now you can uh, we can get these in right up in here all right here we go the one in the back is usually the easiest one to get on or the one in the middle back I should say there we go and then you do the one up front let's get this out of here and they have little slots in them so they can move a little bit back and forth not much but a little bit okay uh, I usually like to wobble because I like to get around the uh, uh, like to get around the valve cover right here and don't tighten these down yet because you still have to put the two on the side down here on the bottoms so let's get those I'm gonna push this back over here so it's kind of out of the way out of the view and you have to go find it. There it is. There's actually three down here. Remember, I put one on already. So let's see if we can find that. So, anyways, this might require two hands because I have to pick the shield up and everything to do it. So let me uh, use two hands. All right, at this point, you have an option. You can either use a ratchet, I would recommend a short one, or you can use a reversible ratchet wrench or even a regular uh, 10 millimeter uh, both are 10 millimeters so make sure you get them all in before you tighten any of them down because you're going to need uh, a little bit of flux so let me go down here and show you where these are at again one there one there and then one right there in the screen let's see if i could show you better there you go one there one there and one right there and then there's three on the top so let's get them tightened down. So let's get all these ones. That one. That one. And this last one down here. left is this one up on top now use the ratchet on that one okay let's get this last one tight up maybe I can show you from this direction I don't know they don't have to be tight now just snug and there's probably a torque spec too and it's probably not much so all right looks like we got her all in so let's put the rest of it back together all right let's get this on here we'll need a 10 millimeter there we go all right here we go we're snugging it up we did both already all right let's get the uh, fuel filter in here just basically push this out of the way 
goes up in here. There we go. And then this tube goes right in here like that. All right. Now all we got to do is put the mud flap on. And I think we're going to skip that in this video in order to make it short. I, I think you guys can figure out to put four screws and two bolts in that. So let's uh, hook up the battery and see what happens. Snug it down. Make sure your battery terminals are clean. You don't have to do these too tight just so that they don't move. All right, let's get the uh, the other one up here. Hold on, there we go. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and see if it'll start. kill it all right success thanks for watching guys uh, I appreciate it God bless you all uh, please give me a thumbs up if you learned something if you really want to help my channel for doing these videos uh, please subscribe it helps my channel standing and advertisers look at that even though I'm a small channel it does help so even if you never come back to the channel it, uh, a subscription still helps Thanks, guys. God bless you all, and keep none you out. Bye.